And since today is Small Business Lobby Day in New York, we're happy to have Ken Pakowski back, VP of Government Affairs for the Business Council. Hello. How are you? I'm oh, good, thanks. Thanks for the invite, Sue. So you uh, just had uh, a, a lobby day. Um, tell us about it. We have about 150 small business owners in Albany today, and it's a joint effort of our group, the Business Council, National Federation of uh, Independent Business, the Farm Bureau, convenience stores, and other groups. And we think this is real important. Um, you know, professional lobbyists populate the capital LOB, but it's, it's great to have the authenticity of business owners who are making payroll every week or trying to, to come to Albany and talk to legislators about how things that the, the legislature is considering doing or has already done affects their ability to make money, to make investments, to keep people on payroll, and to grow jobs in New York State. So it's a great day. Specifically, what has the Cuomo administration done to ensure that small businesses are making payroll? Well, mostly what's happened in the last 16 months is do no harm. We haven't done tax increases, at least not affecting small business. Uh, for downstate small business, we've peeled back a bit. The, uh, the payroll taxes that support the MTA, but compared to what happened in 2009 and 2010, where by our count some 140 separate revenue measures, tax increases, fee increases, totaling some $10 billion on almost everything that small business touches, their energy costs, their labor costs, etc. We, we've changed the approach. We're not raising taxes. We're not adding a lot of new compliance burdens, administrative cost burdens. So, Do you think people are more aware of the the unfunded mandate because of the different um, mandate relief teams that the governor has put together? I mean, there are mandates that also affect business. I think most business were pretty, pretty well aware of what the states require them to do. Sometimes it's come as a shock when they come into effect a year after they were passed. But they're well aware. They know that they had to chase down every employee and get them to sign a piece of paper in January under the Wage Theft Prevention Act. They know they had to pay... Which was repealed. No, it wasn't. I thought DeFrancisco repealed. That was the Savino? Senate. It's passed the Senate. Okay. Uh, we're working, it's one of our issues for today, to see if we can get it passed the Assembly. So when these things hit them, workers' comp increases, are, they, they, they pay their costs. They know these mandates are there. I think they're well, well aware of them. What we're trying to do today is remind them, like every other advocacy group in Albany, that shows up in Albany and appears at legislators' doors. It's, you've, got to come to, you've got to come here. You've got to let your message be heard. And no one's going to do it if you don't come to Albany. So it's a great thing to have the business people themselves uh, come to Albany and talk to legislators. Uh, you know, in this um, environment here in Albany, it seems like small businesses would get a very warm welcome from lawmakers these days. Is that what you find, or is that not always the case? It, it's easier said than done. I think you talk to legislators, they all say we support local business, we support small business. Classic examples on the issue, on the, on the agenda today, minimum wage is going to primarily affect small business people. On a full-time worker, it's going to cost a small business person almost $3,000 for every job uh, at a time when sales are flat, if not down. Other costs are going up. But the expectation is that the small business can just absorb this somehow because it's a social good to put more money in, in people's pockets. Well, it's not just a social good. I think the argument is that people who, uh, get, um, uh, who work for minimum wage work at retail stores you know, for example, and they would go out and spend that money and boost the economy, which right. would ultimately which, help the small is, business. Which is part of the social good. At the same time, if my income is flat, my costs are going up, and I've got to sp spend $3,000 more per employee, my prices are going to go up as well. Where you see low, uh, minimum wage workers are in retail, in grocery stores, so you're going to see a price effect as well. This is not a static number. If business costs go up, Prices are going to go up too, so I'm not. Yeah, it's not a clear-cut win-win for everyone affected. Um, certainly, on the timeline, people are affected sooner rather than later, and small business owners would be affected first. Absolutely, and that's you know today's Small Business Day. This is one of the agenda items we are talking about, and we're making we want to make sure legislators understand that there is a cost. It's not just wages. When my wages go up. My workers' comp premiums go up, my unemployment insurance taxes go up, my 
the employer's share of the FICA taxes go up. So it adds $300 to $400 more per worker. It's not just the income. On top of the wage. On top of the wage. So what kind of reception are you getting in the more liberal, progressive assembly members' offices? Too soon to say. We're really just starting to engage on minimum wage. We know from what the comments have been out there is that the legislators seem to think that this is an issue based on fairness, however you want to define that, and don't seem to be considering that there is a cost. There's a direct cost. This is $3,000 per employee out of pocket. But there's also an opportunity cost. There's really no way to measure the fact that if my wage costs go up, I'm not going to make an investment in expanding my store or adding a store or adding hours or adding people to the payroll. You can't really quantify that. But we want to make sure people understand that this is not a cost-free approach. So there is on the agenda, I know that Dean Skelos, I think, addressed your group. Yes. Okay. So he's the majority leader of the state senate, and he's very interested in pursuing a tax break for small businesses. I'm assuming, taking a wild guess, that you're supportive of that. Well, it didn't happen. It was proposed as part of the budget package. The budget's done. It was not adopted. But isn't he going to continue? He told us he would continue pursuing it. Yeah, but I mean the practicality of doing a significant tax cut outside the context of the budget is pretty limited because it does have to be accommodated in the fiscal plan, and there's really not that much room. But, I mean, you raise an interesting point on the budget. One of the alternatives that's been raised to minimum wage is the earned income tax credit. What that would require is the legislature to decide if it wants to spend $400 to $500 million balancing all the other monies and programs they're funding out of the budget, and they chose not to. Take it from our perspective. Businesses have expenses. Most of them are going up. Income isn't going down. But there seems to be this assumption that business can accommodate expenditures on issues like this when the government can't. Give us a – who is your average – tell us about the average person or business that you represent. Two-thirds of our membership are less than 100 employees. Our largest single sector is – Put a portrait in our mind. One company. The typical company is a small manufacturer with about 100 employees working in upstate New York. The second most typical is a company in a service – not a retail, but in a service provider, a legal service, accounting service, some type of service provider with 50 or fewer employers. We represent most of the large businesses in the state, but the bulk of our members, like the bulk of businesses in the state, are fairly small. So this is a week or several days of an agenda. Tomorrow you're doing an environmental conference with Martens and Region 2 EPA Director Judith Enk. Real quickly, what do you hope to hear from them? Recognizing that there's a balance, that promoting environmental protection – I mean, it has a cost, and we're willing to pay a cost. But it has to be reasonable. It has to be a balance. And New York State, historically, has always jumped past the national standards, adding more costs without a real careful consideration of whether there's any balance between the extra costs and the extra benefits. That's what we're – our message today in the legislature on Small Business Day, you've got to look at both sides. Ken Pekalski is the Vice President of Government Affairs for the Business Council of New York State, and it's always good to talk with you. Thank you very much for dropping in. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate it.